Malaysia's stock exchange recorded 26 IPOs worth approximately 2.5 billion Malaysian ringgit so far this year. Now, as exchanges around the world cope with rising inflation and trying to grow their investor base, we speak with Bursa Malaysia's CEO, Datuk Muhammad Umar Swift, to find out their plans and growth strategies. Umar, welcome. Thank you, Doug. Dato Uma, the focus this year has been a return to growth for Bursa. Your PE ratios are good. Uh, you've been using data and information more carefully. What are the key drivers behind growth this year? Well, I think what we've seen over the past uh, well, year to date, um, some eight months, going on nine months, is, is trading values has uh, moderated moving back to pre-COVID levels and maybe dipping a little bit below. So at Bursa, the conversation is really about building it right for the future. Uh, Bursa as a business has been cash and equities, cash derivatives, and now we're moving into multi-assets. Give us an update on the Bursa Rise scheme that was introduced to increase trading velocity for mid-caps. Has it met or exceeded your expectations so far? I, I think the, the purpose of Bursa Rise and it is focusing on mid caps that investors don't see. And so it actually folds back into another piece, which is introducing companies to investors. Uh, what we're seeing is a generational change of our investors. Uh, COVID has brought us a whole new younger group of investors and we want them to see what's available. And Bursa Rise is a part of that. So we, we've taken what we'd like to call unpolished gems, good companies who could perhaps do better on their investor relations and we make an investment with them on actually raising their profile and we're seeing traction with that. And you also want to grow large cap companies as well al along with those mid caps. So uh, what are the strategies for sort of attracting more of this? So on big cap space we have large institutional investors in Malaysia that can act as cornerstone while also building the retail investor that provide the short term. So each investor has a different uh, investment period. So large caps will be medium term investors where we see retail investors or the smaller investors tend to be more transactional, short term. Some are as short as a day, some will be weekly and we, we sort of analyse what these retail investor groups are doing. And so from a Malaysian context we reach out and make the market attractive because it is deep. Uh, what we've seen over the last uh, the last eight months is clearly very good support for new issuances. IPOs have done very well. Uh, oversubscribed, they've performed well on listing. Uh, and so despite the moderating trading values, we're seeing good support for new IPOs. You've had a strong pipeline of those IPOs. Uh, Bursa has been attractive to those companies, but some of the very big ones have bypassed Bursa. They've gone on to look for, they paid, they've been willing to pay a premium, of course, uh, to go list in, in other jurisdictions. Uh, what is Bursa doing to attract some of the bigger players? I'm sure you're talking about our friends at Grab. If you think about, and let's talk about Grab, you, you, you think about Grab, it would have been four times larger than Maybank, our largest. So from a, from a market perspective, let's be realistic, that would be systemic risk to us. That being said, I um, think the team's doing some wonderful things at Grab. We'd love to have them dual listed, but it's always got to be the right thing for the company itself. So we acknowledge you know, you want to maximise price, there will be certain markets you need to, to maximise price in, um, and we, we take that view. There's plenty of geopolitical risk on the horizon, uh, Omar. What is the game plan to counter what we're seeing uh, with lower trading volumes? We've got inflationary risk pressures, r higher interest rates as well. Everyone is concerned about inflation and the impact of inflation. So from uh, the exchange's perspective and how we look at it is, it gets back to what investors are concerned about. And so investors are concerned about risk, um, value creation. So. It's about making sure companies are addressing, they're getting their narrative right, stepping up rather than keeping up. So there's that one piece. But at the end of the day, exogenous factors are what they are. Um, you know, we look forward and we are concerned about Northern Hemisphere winter, what that will do to energy prices, because energy prices will then uh, move into inflation. It already has. And that will, Malaysia is a trading nation, and Malaysian companies by nature are supporting trade. Uh, 
And so if our, you know, we see GDP moderating significantly in China, we see issues with our next one of our other larger markets in Europe, uh, so will that impact profitability? Well, we're, we're domestically demand, demand driven at the moment, which is reflected in um, you know, the published GDP of 8.9%, which was tremendous. And we're forecasting 6.3 to 5.3 for this calendar year. But there should you know, potentially the headwinds driven by exogenous factors, which are inflation offshore, the, the impact of uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, and so on. Uh, and a, a final question for you, Omar. Uh, we were speaking earlier, and uh, the issue of the next generation, mm -hmm. uh, the torchbearers for mm -hmm. the future, there's a massive amount of intergenerational wealth that is perhaps about to be turned over into the hands of this younger generation, mm -hmm. the millennials, the Gen Zs, and so on. How is Bursa preparing for this new wave of young investors? Young investors um, have a very different habit, and we can see that. And so from an exchange perspective, we've actually begun analysing how people trade and how they behave and how they like to do business or how they like to interact. And clearly, friction is the issue. And so from our perspective, we're building portals. Um, so again, Bursa Rise is part of that, providing information. Um, and as it goes, the, the other piece, of course, is providing bite-sized learning opportunities. A well-informed investor or a well-educated investor, I mean, please, if it is too good to be true, it is too good to be true. There's no doubt about it. And so getting that message across, and there's a great deal of disinformation. So what we're doing at the exchange is we want people to use verified information. Please make the decisions. We don't judge your decision, but we'd like your decision to be based on fact.